Well folks, how's it going? How you doing? How's your day been? My day's been great. The video you guys are gonna go watch is gonna be good, but I had to redo an intro because I gotta tell you guys something important. I'm hosting a meetup at Shields in Omaha. It's gonna be crazy, it's gonna be big, it's gonna be epic. The meetup is on April 27th. It's a Saturday, I'll be there from 1 to 3 p.m. We're gonna be having Guggenbaits, favorite rods, some gear, some merch, some Guggenbaits merch. We have a bunch of stuff that you guys can come and come hang out with me, sign a bunch of stuff, take photos, whatever you want. You guys just wanna go chill. I'll probably be giving out some stuff, maybe some free Guggenbaits, free favorite rods. We'll, we'll be doing some giveaways for sure. But you guys, if you guys are in the Omaha, Nebraska area or in driving distance and you wanna come hang out for the day, Come to Shields in Omaha, Nebraska. I'll put the address down below if you guys wanna go check it out. 1 to 3 p.m., you should be there. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be filmed, so if you wanna make it into the video, you gotta be there. Anyways, with that being said, enjoy the video. Oh my goodness, folks. Welcome back to the episode of Fishing of Flare. Today, I'm actually at the MTB Crib. Look at it. It's almost, well, there's some stuff everywhere, but it's pretty much empty. I just flew in. I'm gonna be here for just a couple days. We've got an important meeting. We're moving stuff to the warehouse. We're actually officially like legitimately moving out of this house. I missed it. Like I just got, I landed from Omaha here like 20 minutes ago and then Ubered and everything's gone. I missed it. There was a moving truck, Perico here. He was vlogging, um, but I missed, I missed like the whole like move. But anyways, I'm just here to show you guys kind of what happened. Um, but I said, I'm gonna be fishing probably hopefully later today or tomorrow or something, but I'm gonna kind of start the vlog off with not straight up fishing. We're gonna show you what's going on here at the MTB crib and more importantly at the new Guggen HQ on my channel, I, think, I don't think you guys have seen it. So you guys are gonna see the new Guggen HQ. We got a giant, huge warehouse. And uh, that's what we're gonna be operating out of, filming videos and doing all the important things at the warehouse. But check out this. I mean, this is, so this is what the MTB crib is. If you guys don't know, two years ago, a little more than two years ago, me, Perrick, John, well, I mean, all the Guggens, but me and Perrick and John lived here. We moved down to Dallas and lived here for a while. And this is where we filmed the majority of the Guggen Squad videos. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the Guggen Squad channel, I will link it down below. You guys can go check it out. You guys should, because that's where all the lit content, all the collaborations that that are that get done are on that channel. So you guys should go check it out. But this is the MTB crib. Like I said, it's, I mean, it's it's still a mess for sure, but it's it's looking stinking empty. We used to have a huge couch there. We used to have a TV. And then Gary's tank, if you guys don't know Gary, Look at Gary's tank is gone. It's gone. That huge massive tank is gone. Is that a dead fish? Oh, that's so gross. Look at it. That is freaking nasty. All right, well, there's a minnow. That's one of Gary's Gary's uh, feeding fish that didn't make it. But right here used to be desk. This used to be, used to be the podcast studio right here. And then we had Gary's tank behind and it's just, again, there's a bunch of junk. We got some fan mail too. It's not all junk. We got some fan mail. We've got even more fan mail up on the wall. And that stuff will be coming with us. We're not just throwing it away, folks. Over here, this was our big business meeting room that had a meeting conference table. That's gone. So we had a dining table. We had a poker table over there that never got used. In the garage, I think the garage is in shambles right now. Oh yeah, that's just a bunch of junk. This is all throwaway. We got a dump truck coming later today. But the garage is pretty much somewhat organized and picked up. We got my truck. If you guys didn't know, that's what my truck looks like now. Sick. Brazil mustache flare just right on the side with Guggen baits and all the goodness. So that's my truck now, if you guys didn't know. Right over here is my room. Look at it. Completely empty. We have even the Bieber posters gone. Everything is gone. My bed was over here. I didn't really have a whole lot in here, but this is just completely stinking empty. This is crazy. Clearly, we have a lot of cleaning up to do, but you guys get the point. We're moving, we're leaving. We're leaving this house slowly but surely. We're getting all of our junk and items picked up out of here. But that's essentially what's going on right now, folks. Gonna kind of wrap all this up, help move everything. And then we're gonna probably pick this vlog up at the warehouse. I'm gonna go meet the mover truck at the warehouse and help them kind of unload and tell them where we want everything. And then I'll show you guys what the warehouse looks like. If you guys haven't seen it yet, stay tuned. Two hours later. What do you think, Brian? It's a lot of work. You, think, you like it? You happy with it? Yeah. Do you think oh, this, place is, this is the first time they've seen it. Oh, shoot. They haven't yeah. really seen it yet. I just kind of just walked up to you, but. Oh yeah, it's cool. Is it, you like it? Yeah. This is the new warehouse. We got all of this with the truck. All this is all new furniture, not new. This is old furniture getting moved in. Parrot. He's just running laps, doing Parrot things. But in here, this is the office area. Now, this is this is like the, the do business side of things. That's the playroom, okay? You know like children have playrooms in their house or like at daycare? That's ours. 17,000 square foot playroom just for this guy right here. It's all for him. That's all it is. This is what? This is an editing bay? Yep, editing. And then we got storage. Oh look, we even brought the fan mail from the other house. This is Brian's happy place right here. All the camera gear. What are you doing, Jim? 
I like that hoodie of yours. It's, it's Dude, a classic. Dude, this is an OG, that's an OG. That's the first hoodie we ever made. That's an OG. What else we got in here? Another editing. Oh, automatic lights. Another editing room. And this is just like a, so like, I don't know, where you just like chill, like meet and eat food, drink, whatever. We have bathrooms here. What's in here? Meeting room. This is going to be the meeting room. This is where all the important stuff happens. The designing of the new Guggenbaits, new colors, anything like that gets done right in here. This is the laboratory. Over in this room, this is going to be a podcast room until it's kind of like all set up. It's not really a set up at all. We actually had a meeting today about it. We've got some good ideas. In a week? In a week? Parrick says we'll be done in a week. Then over here, we've got, this is the kitchen. This is where all the kitchen cooks happen. We've got new kitchen put in this little area. We've got a bathroom and a shower back there. This is, well, you guys can tell it's just kind of a, a mess right now. It's Rona season, baby. And then this is gonna be my room, my bedroom. Look, got the beaver posters up and everything. And then whoever else wants to stay, I guess. And then over here, Parrick will be here. We're gonna have a couple beds in here, so maybe some bunk beds, something like that. Last but not least, through this door is this is the storefront. Oh, look, we got Gary. What's up, dude? They moved Gary's tank in here. Gary's over there just doing Gary things. We got the tank in here. This is the storefront. So you can see right here, that's the playroom. That way, when you guys come to the store, you can see us in the playroom doing Guggen things. But then you guys, like, this is going to be open. This is going to be open to the public. This is an actual store. Like, here's the front desk. We've got TVs. Here's a parking lot. So you guys pull in, you park, come through these doors. We're going to have Guggen baits over here. We're gonna have some rods for sale. We're gonna have maybe some coffee. We're gonna have everything. Anything Guggen branded, anything that you guys see in our videos that we use, we're gonna sell here. You guys at home watching can come here. We're not releasing the address yet because obviously we got a lot of work to do. The, uh, the storefront isn't exactly done yet. But it's gonna look cool. It's a cool space. We've got like green tiling in here, like Guggen green. It's gonna be good. You guys can come here. You know, all the Guggens will be here kind of off and on so you get the chance obviously to meet us, come hang out with us. We'll just be chilling and uh, obviously you can go Take selfies with Gary. Gary, he's a big selfie guy. Loves taking selfies. So you guys at home can come and take selfies with Gary, but that's pretty much it. It's a new Guggen HQ, folks. We will be releasing the address very, very soon. So stay tuned. We're going to be doing a grand opening, and it's going to be epic. So you guys should stay tuned for that. But I had to show you guys what's going on. We're trying to move everything. We've actually got to go back to the MTB crib right now and help throw away just some of that junk. we got a dumpster coming and stuff. And then hopefully, fingers freaking crossed, we're gonna go fishing. You guys stay tuned. Six and a half hours later. Whew. All right, folks. Like I said, now you can see me. Like I said, I wanted to go fishing today, and that's exactly what I'm doing. We got cameras on, Juicy Creek, and some danglers rigged up and ready to go. All right, folks, we're walking down the bank. If you guys have watched my, oh, I just definitely scared some, okay. I got to talk quieter. I just scared three bass. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, this pond, well, this creek, I've actually fished, I think, two years in a row. The very first year that we moved in the Google Squad house, John B. took me here. It was probably about this time of year. And then I came here last year in March. So I feel like it's a, just an annual tradition at this point. But I definitely just scared some fish. So I'm going to be quiet. Water is crystal clear if you guys can't see it. So I'm going to try to, like, maybe I should just make some bomb casts from here. What I've got tied on, I've got a little green pumpkin chatterbait. And then I've got a little stick bait right here. Just the classic watermelon red. I knew the water was gonna be clear here, so you wanna throw something obviously fairly natural. I definitely scared some bass when I came down here just a second ago. We've caught some absolute tanks out of this little creek, but believe it or not, it's crazy, but we have caught some good fish out of here before. All right, I'm not seeing any more fish. I'm gonna keep moving. I believe on the other side, it's a little bit more dirty, which probably something I want. Anytime you're walking the bank like this, if it's like super crystal, crystal clear, it's gonna make it kind of tough. I don't see too many more bass. We're gonna go, we're gonna go to where I think is the juice. This might jog your guys' memory. If you guys have been watching the channel, I've walked actually across this many times. Don't feel like getting my shoes wet, so I'm gonna keep going, but this is probably one of the more recognizable spots on this body of water that you guys are probably like, oh yeah, I remember you fishing there. So me and John B came here two years ago, and then I think we actually caught some of the bluegills that are in the fish tank right now here, and I believe I filmed a video here last year as well. But honestly, this is one of my all time favorite things to do this time of year. I know everybody else, John and Lunkers and LFG and Peric, they're all getting in their boats and fishing the lakes, chasing down 10 pounders. But to me, there's something about creeks. I don't know. It's just like when they're spawning, like you can usually see, I don't know. It's not that I don't enjoy the, the, the lake fishing. I definitely do. I really do enjoy it. But something about creek fishing this time of year just gets me all sorts of excited. Here we go. This is what I'm working with here, folks. That is, yes, you see it right. That's a chatterbait with a trench hog on the back. Look at that thing. Mmm, something a little bit different. Something to give just a little bit of a kicky kicky, you know? Just just a little kicky kicky is all you need. We're gonna see what these fish think about the old trench daddy on the back of the chatterbait. 
a lot of times throwing a chatterbait like this is just straight reaction. You just catch them off a of straight reaction. They don't even, oh, 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 that was a fish. That was a fish. Look at that. What did I just say? That was a, that was a bite. I saw him come out and eat it. He wasn't very big. Maybe a, maybe a two, three pounder. I don't know if he'll eat it again, but I'm just gonna parallel this bank. Just slow roll this chatterbait right past them. Then it just causes a reaction strike. And it's some, again, they're not even hungry. They're just eating it out of pure instinct. Oh, dude, he smoked it right when it landed. Oh my gosh, I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Come on, bud. Get up in here. Yes. Dude, I must have landed on its head. Oh, the chatterbait. The chatterbait with the trench, daddy. Dang, look at that lateral line on him. That thing is freaking intense. Heck yeah. Dude, you said I saw that the second it landed. I'm telling you, this is the reaction strike. I know Peric gave me grief for saying when fish are on beds, don't throw the chatterbait or it's not my favorite bed fishing lure, okay? All I know is when fish are thinking about doing the dirty on the bed, I chuck that chatterbait and it just straight up catches it. All right, little buddy, appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you later, Henry. Boom. Yes. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew this shadow it was gonna be the deal. It's just something about it. Just creates reaction strikes. Like that, I mean, I probably could have seen, if I was looking where I was casting, I probably could have saw that fish before I even, before I even bit. I mean, I can see right to there, which is pretty much where I caught him. But the second it landed, it stopped. And I was like, what, what am I snagged on? Literally must've hit him right on the head. But this thing, I love it because you throw it, and when it hits the bottom or it lands, I mean, it's just like a big jig, you know, like obviously that creates a react strike. But then, you know, once you start reeling, then it's a chatterbait. Not that it's like really a two in one, but like if I would throw a jig right where I threw that chatterbait, it would have gotten bit. But the nice thing about this is a jig, you just kind of drag on the bottom. There's a ton of grass in this little creek, so a jig would not do well, it just get hung up. So you can throw it out there, still get the reaction strike that a jig would get if you hit it, you know, relatively close to where the fish is sitting. But then you just get to crank it in and then you get an opportunity to catch a fish all the way back to the, to the bank or the boat or wherever you're fishing. So that is why, right there folks, that is why I love throwing the freaking chatterbait. All right, we're gonna keep on moving down the creek. This creek isn't really all that big, except it kind of goes a ways that way, which I haven't fished a ton of them. This is this is usually the deepest hole kind of on this stretch that I think, I think is the deepest, and usually has the most juice. Keep on kind of walking. Jeez, and rice, I about died. We're gonna keep on, oh, I just scared one. Oh man. I was gonna say, try to walk quiet as I step on the world's freaking loudest tree branch. All right, we're gonna stop right here. I just saw one. The game with this type of fishing and ultra clear creeks when it's sunny like this is uh, long casts. Guess get yourself some fluorocarbon. I'm using the old Guggen Squad fluorocarbon. Yeah, that's right. We've got fluorocarbon, folks. It'll be linked down below if you guys want to go try it out. It's the Guggen fluorocarbons when I'm throwing. It disappears as soon as it hits the water. They don't even see it coming. And long casts, that's, that's key. Is that a bass? Yes, it is. Does it see me? There's two of them. It does not want anything to do with my chatterbait. Okay. All right. All right. New strat. New strat. Audible, boys. Audible. We're calling it an audible. We need to put on a bed fishing bait. That's what we need. Because there's a couple of them. That's a good one. I don't want to keep passing them up. So we're going to put on an actual bait that I use to try to catch bed fish. Here we go. Now we're talking. Get the old crack and crawl going, boys. We got a little T-Rig rigged up here with a watermelon cracking. I think that fish is still down there. But this or the Bandito are gonna be the deal. Or the Trench, the Trench is good too, but for bed fishing, I've had the best luck with the Kraken and the, the Bandito. So we're gonna tie this guy on and we're gonna pitch it right at that fish. I think it's a pretty good one, maybe a three pounder. See what he thinks about it. Come on, Bass, come on, Bass. He's locked on, this one's actually locked. This is a 100% catchable fish. 100, oh, he just nipped at it. Oh, this fish is toast. Say sayonara, little guy. You're gonna go for a little ride. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it. Oh, he ate it, he ate it. Oh no, oh no. Look at it, he took the pinchers. He took the pinchers. Calm down. Calm down. You got this, Flair. Focus. Focus. Don't let the freaking green fish win. Re-rig this guy. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna catch this fish. He's He is locked. That thing about bed fishing is like, I've seen a couple of bed fish already, but they're not locked. This guy is locked. And it is just, it does not want to move whatsoever. All right, here we go. 
Round two. Oh yeah, she's still there. She's toast. She's gone forever. Oh, 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 she grabbed the pinchers. Oh, she just ripped a pincher off. She's got it. Oh no, she ripped the pinchers. She ripped a pincher. I literally watched her rip a pincher off and then just swam away. We're going with the one pincher wonder here, folks. Let's see if that does the trick. This fish has got to be pissed by now. Oh my gosh. Dude, she just took another pincher. Look at this thing. How? Give me one good reason how that happened. How does she know to grab just the pincher? All right, last craw in my package. I don't know if I've got any more craws. I think I've got some banditos, which those will also work. Quit munching on the claws, dang it. Going through all my freaking krakens. Oh, I see her, she's still there. Come on, third time's the charm. Third time is the charm. Three strikes and you're out, sister. She's, she's got it, she's got it. Yes, yes. Get up in here, boy. Come here, boom. Got it. I don't know what words just came out of my mouth, but I caught a fish, folks. Yes, sir. Finally, third time is the charm. The old Kraken done did it, folks. I mean, not as big as I thought. You know, fish always look bigger in the water, or I just get too excited and like to overhype everything like I do in everything in my videos. But besides the point, we got a solid little donkey. All right, Shakisha, see you later. Boom. There, Shakisha go. Dude, look at Shakisha in the water. Looks like a freaking tank. Finally, folks. We done did it. We done figured it out. They want the crack and crawl. Thank goodness I only have one left. I did not bring very much gear, but hey, you know what? There's a lesson for you guys. Pay attention to the situation, okay? You show up to the pond wanting to throw the stanko. You throw the stanko and they don't bite the stanko. Take the stanko off, put on the crack and crawl and catch fish, boom. You gotta be able to adjust to the conditions. You gotta be able to adjust to what the fish want. They don't always want the stanko. Sometimes they don't even want the crack and believe it or not, as succulent as that bait looks. Sometimes they don't even want it, but most of the time they do. The 99% of the time, they want to put this little crawdaddy in their mouth. All right, baby, we're back on the move. We gotta go find us another bed fish. That, those are the kind of bed fish I like. They are just locked and they're pissed and they want nothing to do with the bait inside their bed. Those are the best ones. You just gotta catch them at the right time. You gotta go fishing every single day. Tell your parents, mom, not going to class, the fish are on beds. And I need to go fishing every single day to make sure I catch them when they're gonna stay locked on the beds and eat the bait. You can tell her Flair told you that. Oh, that's a tank. That's a tank bass. What the heck? What was you doing? I didn't even see that thing. I threw my chatterbait over here. He didn't like the chatterbait. That was a bigger one. Like, no BS, much larger. Probably pushing three and a half, four pounder. There's a fish. Got him, got him. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. Yes, sir, that was blind casting. Blind casting the cracking crawl. Let's go, boy. What's up, my dude? Oh, shoot, come here, bub. Yes, blind casting the cracking did it. It don't did it. Look at that, right in the top of the mouth. That's right where you want them. Mmm, got him. See you later, Leroy. Boom, Leroy was sitting down yonder. If you didn't know, that's kind of where I came across and I walked. And I didn't catch anything there the first time. But I also wasn't throwing the Kraken. The Kraken might be the deal here, folks. They may just be dialed on that Kraken craw. Like I was talking about earlier, the water kind of flows right here, which is, I made one cast there, I didn't catch anything. So then I made a cast right over there to the other pocket. Basically, there's like two pockets. It kind of forms like a T. Just little pockets right here. I did not know I had that fish. I think definitely was chewing on it for a solid five seconds. Because I saw my line go one way, then I saw my line go the other, and then I finally set the hook. So there you go. That just goes to show they ain't gonna let go of this Kraken crawl. They think they're just munching on a little crawfish. Well, well, well. Imagine, imagine driving this truck, okay? Pulling up to somebody at the gas station and then looking at the truck and going, wow, why is that dude so ugly that's on the side of this truck? I don't, what's, what's Guggen, what's Bates? Why is there a really ugly dude with a mustache? And then they see me grab the pump and then turn around and look at them and they're like, oh, that's him. Now, welcome to my life, folks. Welcome to my life. 